In this video, I'll demonstrate how to calculate factorial ANOVA using formulas. With one-way ANOVA, you have a single independent variable, and that independent variable has multiple levels, anywhere from two to a really unlimited number of levels. But they all have to be lined up in the same direction. That's why they call it a one-way ANOVA. Factorial ANOVA allows you to test multiple independent variables simultaneously and the most common type of experimental design in psychology uh, research, uh, I think is it's fair to say it's a 2x2 two two factorial ANOVA, where you have the first independent variable with two levels and the second independent variable also with two levels. What that does is it allows you to determine the independent contribution of each of these independent variables, as well as the interaction effect between those two. Uh, variables. And I'll demonstrate how to do that using formulas. Factorial ANOVA divides the treatment effect of the between subject sum of squares, or SS between. It takes the SS between and divides it into different parts, reflecting the amount of variability attributable to each independent variable. Let's review the formulas. First we have the sum of squares total. And uh, you would use this also with the one-way NOVA. What we do here is we take every score on variable x, subtract the grand mean from it. Mean sub g stands for the uh, grand mean, or the mean of everybody in the experiment. You square that deviation score. And once you've done it for all cases or uh, observations in the data set, then you add them all up. The second formula is for the between group sum of squares. And what we do here, you can see that we've got a specific order of operations designated by parentheses and brackets. You do what's inside the parentheses first. Mean sub j stands for the mean of the jth group. If you have four groups, then you'll have four different means. If you have two groups, you'll have two different means. So it just stands for the mean of the first group, the mean of the second group, etc. Take the mean of the group, subtract the grand mean from it, get that deviation score, square it, and then multiply, you square it, and then you multiply it by the n, or sample size, of that group. So n sub j matches the sample size of that group with the mean of that group. And I'll demonstrate how to do that. The third formula is the sum of scores within, where you take every individual, I stands for individual, take every individual in every jth group, subtract the mean of the jth group from that individual score, take that deviation score squared, add it up. So basically what you're doing is you're taking every person or observation within a specified group subtracting the mean of that group from those people's scores, squaring it, and then moving on to the next group and doing the same thing using that group's mean. But there's a shortcut. So if you have the total and the between, you don't need to calculate the within uh, using the formula. You can take a shortcut where the uh, sum of scores total minus the between equals the within. Now for the factorial ANOVA, we have two additional formulas and another shortcut. You have the sum of squares for columns. And notice that this looks very much like the between group sum of squares. You have brackets and parentheses to specify the order of operations. Do what's inside the parentheses first. Take the mean of each column. Mean sub c represents the mean of column 1 the mean of column two, etc. If you had three columns where uh, the column represents an independent variable, uh, you'll have the, uh, the number of levels of that independent variable will, will determine the number of columns. So if you have, uh, if it's a two by two factorial ANOVA, then you'll have two columns and two rows. You take the mean of the first column, subtract the grand mean from it, 
square that deviation score, and then multiply it by the number of people in that column. And then move on to the next column, do the same thing, add them together. Then you have a similar formula for the rows. It's really the identical formula, it's just got different subscript. Do what's inside the parentheses first, take the mean of row 1, subtract the grand mean from it, square that deviation score, and then multiply by the number of people in that row. Then move on to the next row. Conceptually, this is what we're doing. This represents a one-way ANOVA, where you have the total amount of variability, or sum of squares, which is divided up into the treatment effect, otherwise known as the sum of squares between, and the non-treatment effect, otherwise known as the sum of squares within. If you take the between, add it to the within, it equals the total. That's the additive principle at work here. The between group sum of squares is your signal or treatment effect. Sum of squares within is your noise or non-treatment effect. It's a signal to noise ratio where the F test would be MS between over MS within. Now with factorial ANOVA, what we're going to do is uh, take this further, and the treatment effect, which is comprised uh, within the sum of squares between, well, let me say that a different way. The treatment effect is uh, represented by the sum of squares between. Now that gets chopped up into columns, rows, and interaction effect, like this. And the additive principle is still at work. So that if you add together the columns, rows, and interaction, it will equal the sum of squares between. Here's a one-way ANOVA summary table. And normally what you would do is calculate the between group sum of squares, then the total, or vice versa, and then the within using a shortcut. The shortcut is simply that if you do the total and the between, uh, the between groups plus the within adds up to the total. So you could you just get the uh, remainder. Uh, the total minus the between will give you the within. Fill in the degrees of freedom, get the mean square, and the F test. Now the factorial ANOVA summary table is a little bit more complicated because it has columns, rows, and interaction effects. And you can see that I've indented it here. The indentation is uh, my way of representing the fact that the columns, rows, and interaction all came out of the between groups. So there's an additive principle that if you have any two of these, if you know the between group sum of squares, and if you have the columns and rows, then just subtract, subtract the column and row effect from the between, subject, uh, between groups sum of squares, and that'll give you the within. Uh, when I get to the numbers, you'll see how this works. So let's play with some actual numbers. Uh, for this hypothetical, I've got two different independent variables, psychotherapy and drugs. One group gets both, psychotherapy and drugs. One gets only psychotherapy, one gets only drugs. And the control group doesn't get any treatment. They're, it's a wait list. Higher scores in this hypothetical represent improvement. So you can see that the combination of these two is yielding uh, better improvement, but each one of these groups, uh, the psychotherapy and drugs, seems to have uh, some improvement by themselves. Although with drugs, it's debatable. Uh, the, uh, the approach that I'm using, by the way, is similar to that of Rosenthal and Rosnow in their classic text, Essentials of Behavioral Science. They've got a similar hypothetical, uh, different data, but uh, similar hypothetical with psychotherapy and drugs. So what we're going to do is we're going to take these scores. We have 20 scores here. There are four groups with five people in each group. Get the grand mean of all those scores. The grand mean here is five. I added together all the scores uh, divided by 20. And then you line up the scores in their respective groups. 
So you can see that I've uh, put added space inside each one of these because I need the space for com uh, computations. I'm going to take every score and variable x, where x is the dependent variable, subtract the grand mean from that value, and then square it. And then down here, I'll add them up. Now you can see that I have the group means down here. The mean of group 1 is 7, the mean of group 2 is 6, the mean of group 3 is 4, and the mean of group 4 is 3. Here I have uh, computed the deviation scores, 8 minus the grand mean, which is 5, yields 3. 8 minus 5 is 3 again, and so on. 6 minus 5 is 1. If you added together all 20 of these deviation scores, at the end it would equal, it would equal 0. But we're not going to use 0. What, what we're going to do instead is we're going to square these deviation scores, because that's what the formula calls for. Now I've got my squared deviation scores, and the next step is to add them up. 9 plus 9 plus 9 plus 1, 28, and so on. And when you take the sum from each one of these four groups, add them all together, then you'll have the total sum of squares. So, 28 plus 11 plus 9 plus 40 gives you the total amount of variability in the study. The total amount of variability which is comprised of both the treatment effect and the non-treatment effect. And that is 88. The next step is to compute the sum of scores between. Which again what we do here is we take the mean of each group, subtract the grand mean, square it, multiply it by the number of people in that group. Do what's inside the parentheses first. So for the first group, it would be 7 minus 5, where 5 is the grand mean. 7 minus 5 squared times 5, because there are 5 people here. There are 5 observations. I've set it up here. You can see all the computations. Each group mean is inside the parentheses. Uh, and then we subtract the grand, grand mean from it square that value, multiply it by the number of people in that group. Each group here has five people. The sum of squares between comes out to be 50. So now we have the between sum of squares and the total sum of squares. We put those in our summary table. We're going to fill in this whole table. And we can use the shortcut for the within sum of squares where if we have any two of these, we can get the third, 88 minus 50, will give us the within. So that's 38. Then we move on to the degrees of freedom, where the degrees of freedom is defined as k minus 1 for the between. k is the number of groups. Capital N is the total number of people. So for this hypothetical experiment, k would be 4, n would be 20. Therefore, k minus 1 is 3, n minus k is 16, n minus 1 is 19. But we also need the degrees of freedom for columns, rows, and interaction. And the definition for this is that uh, the columns, degree, the column degree of freedom will be equal to c minus 1, where c is the number of columns. Same thing for the rows. The row degrees of freedom is defined as r minus 1, where r equals the number of rows. And then the interaction effect of columns and rows uh, has a degree of freedom that's equal to c minus 1 times r minus 1. In other words, whatever you get here, multiply by whatever you get here. And these Columns, rows, and interaction degrees of freedom will equal k minus 1. So you can see I've uh, uh, inserted the degrees of freedom. And in fact, the column, row, and interaction degrees of freedom, when you add them up, it's equal to 3. It has to be because they came out of the between. So the between is the one-way NOVA omnibus test test of the overall effect. 
And what we're doing with the column source and interaction is we're looking at different parts of that overall effect. We're chopping it up into different segments. That's why the columns, rows, and interaction will add up to 50 for the sum of squares. And for the degrees of freedom, the interaction, row, and column degrees of freedom will add up to 3. Moving to the right-hand side of the table, we can calculate the ms between, which is the mean square. Mean square is simply the sum of squares divided by its degrees of freedom going across that row. So 50 divided by 3 gives you 16.667. Then you do the same thing down here for the within. 38 divided by 16 gives you 2.375. And then your F ratio would be your signal to noise ratio, 16.667 divided by 2.375, which gives you 7.018. We still need to do the center part. We still need to compute the columns, rows, and interaction sum of squares. So that's the next thing we'll do. Before we do it, we have to realign the cells in our study. So what I've done here is I've created a 2x2 two two table with psychotherapy present and absent as columns. All those people in column 1 got psychotherapy. All those people in column two did not get psychotherapy. And then the same thing for drugs, except that it's represented in rows. So for the first row, everybody gets drugs. For the second row, nobody gets drugs. And you can see that when you cross-index these in this manner, you end up with both types of therapy or psychotherapy alone, or drugs alone, or nothing, the control group. And these match the designations up here. For the psychotherapy plus drug, that is the first group here, where you have both. Psychotherapy alone is up here, and that matches this cell, and so on. Now, uh, what I've done here is I've inserted the uh, cell means instead of the raw data. We don't need the raw data anymore. Uh, the cell means make it a little bit easier to see what's going on. And then I have my grand mean in the corner. Next, I can compute the column means and row means. The mean of column 1, so subscript here is uh, mean sub C1, that stands for column 1. And over here you see mean sub C2, that's column 2. The mean of column 1 is determined by 7 plus 6 divided by 2, which is 6.5. Now this simplistic approach only works when you have equal sample sizes, which we do. So there's no problem. Uh, if you had unequal sample sizes, you'd have to do some weighting, uh, W-E-I-G-H-T-I-N-G, weighting, in order to represent the values fairly. Uh, in other words, you'd have to basically you'd have to take the raw scores and get the average that way. But because we have equal sample sizes, it works with just the cell means. So we do that for uh, column 2. Uh, 4 plus 3 divided by 2 is 3.5. And then we move on to the row means. And you can see I did the same thing here for the rows. These are also referred to as marginal means because they're in the margins. Now, I take my formula for the sum of squares for columns. I do what's inside the parentheses first, so the mean of column 1 minus the grand mean, square that value, then multiply it by the number of people in column 1. There are 10 people in column 1. Each cell has 5. So the value here for n sub c1, or column 1, would be n equals 10. Uh, there are 5 people here by people here. We just don't have the raw scores on the table anymore. We have the means. So when you fill out the formula for both of these columns, column 1 has a mean of 6.5, column 2 has a mean of 3.5. So that's what, that's what those numbers are. 
uh, when you finish the computation, it comes out to be 45. Next, we move on to the rows. And we take the mean of row 1, subtract the grand mean, in just the same way that we did before. Except we're using the row marginal means instead of the column marginal means. And when you uh, compute the computation, it comes out to be 5. Now, we can go to our table and fill in these values. Sum of scores for columns is 45. Sum of scores for rows is 5. And then the shortcut for the interaction, because these have to add up to 50, we can see that this has to be 0. It's kind of unusual to have a, a, a value of 0 in one of these. It's because it's fake data. Then moving to the mean square, we take each of our values for the sum of squares divided by its respective degrees of freedom. 45 divided by 1 will be 45 and so on. And then each one of these in turn will be um, divided by the within group sum of squares. And that gives you a separate F test for each column, row, and interaction effect. So 45 divided by 2.375 gives you 18.947. 5 divided by 2.375 gives you 2.105. And 0 divided by this gives you 0. Now, this would be your column or psychotherapy main effect. 2.105 would be your row or drug main effect. And 0 is the interaction effect. Just to check to make sure that it adds up, here's the output from SPSS I've highlighted the relevant portions, and you can see that these different sections all show up in my table. Uh, so that's a nice way to check the math from the uh, corrected model, which is the between groups, psychotherapy, drugs, the interaction effect has the asterisk here, psychotherapy by drugs. Uh, the error is the within groups. And then the corrected total is what we call the total. And uh, yeah, so everything matches. And that is how you calculate a factorial ANOVA. Thanks for watching.